This is the Charlotte Douglas International Airport. With over 250,000 arrivals, delivering 45 million passengers each year, it is among America's busiest airports. But it wasn't always like this. Because we live in an age where airplanes and airports are commonplace, few people give even a brief thought as to how Charlotte became this amazing hub of aviation transportation. Like many aviation stories, this one starts in 1903 with the Wright brothers. On the beaches of North Carolina, they successfully flew a powered airplane for the first time. 300 miles west of that first flight, airplanes were far from the minds of the people of Charlotte. Five miles west of the city, out along the Southern Railway line, was a community called Juneau. It was a quiet rural area dotted with farms and woodlands in western Mecklenburg County. And while no one could hear it yet, a faint, imperceptible sound was on the wind. The sound of airplanes. In 1919, the world had been working on perfecting the airplane for 16 years. World War I had recently ended. Just west of downtown Charlotte was Camp Green, a 6,000-acre U.S. Army facility that was built as part of the war effort. With the war over, the camp had served its purpose. The Army was disposing of the property. The area, once used by the Army for pilot training, ended up in the hands of well-known local aviator Johnny Kroll. Mr. Kroll was an airshow pilot and a bit of a barnstormer. His airport was located on a 130-acre tract of land bordered by present-day Freedom Drive, Ashley Road, and Allegheny Street, three miles northwest of the city center. Crow used the airport mostly for putting on air shows. Aviation was still young and very few airlines existed. The U.S. Mail Service was one of the few making regular flights, and their routes did not include Charlotte. It wasn't until the 1st of April, 1930, that the U.S. Mail Service finally landed at the airport and added Charlotte to their route system. The city now had scheduled air service. Throughout this time, neither Johnny Kroll nor the airport had any affiliation with the city of Charlotte, other than being located nearby. While other small airfields were popping up in the region, it was Kroll's airport that became known as the Charlotte Airport. And the city of Charlotte, for the time being, seemed content with the arrangement. In 1936, Mr. Joe Cannon purchased the property. The airport was rebranded and became known as the Cannon Airport, which is the name the airport is more commonly referred to as in the history books. But even before that first airmail plane touched down on Cannon Field, the airport's days were numbered. The runways were deemed too short for the larger, faster aircraft coming onto the scene. As the 1930s were ushered in, Johnny Kroll had been putting on air shows and dazzling the crowds out at his airport for over a decade. The recent addition of scheduled airmail service also brought the U.S. Weather Bureau to the airport. It wasn't until 1935 that the city of Charlotte finally woke up and showed interest in the burgeoning field of aviation. And that was due largely to a brand new mayor, Mr. Ben Albert Douglas, who had just been elected. Shortly after Mayor Douglas took office, the city applied for Work Progress Administration funds, commonly referred to as the WPA, to build an airport. Later that year, a bond proposal was approved by the voters, which cleared the way to buy land for the project. A site was chosen. It was to be near the community of Juneau five miles west of Midtown Charlotte on the Southern Railway Line. The community of Juneau was where present-day Old Dow Road and Harley Avenue intersect. Today, the intersection is surrounded by airport parking lots, and all traces of the little community are gone and long forgotten. On 3 November 1935, the WPA allotted funds for the airport. The city immediately purchased 438 acres of land and broke ground before November was over. Plans called for three runways. Runways 1836 and 422 were to be 3,000 feet long. 
Runway 1129 would be 2,500 feet long. All three would be 500 feet wide with the center 100 feet paved. In addition to having three runways, the airport would also have a two-story administrative building and a hangar, which would be located on the north side of the airfield. Construction continued through 1936. The city hoped their new airport would be done before the end of the year, but construction delays pushed the opening to 1937. But that didn't stop Eastern Airlines because on 14 November 1936, they landed at the unfinished airfield to conduct a tour of the facilities. That was the first airplane to land at Charlotte's new airport. When May of 1937 came, the airport was still not open. An impatient Eastern Airlines said, the heck with it. And on 17 May 1937, even though the airport still was not officially open, landed in one of their Lockheed 10E Electras, officially beginning their service to the new Charlotte Municipal Airport. The formal airport opening was on Saturday, 3 July 1937, right before Independence Day. Mayor Douglas made a speech before a crowd gathered at the airport administration building and the Charlotte Municipal Airport was now open for business. Western Mecklenburg County went from quiet rural farmland to airport in 21 months and the character of the area forever changed. On 11 September 1938, the Airport Commission approved the first in a long line of airport projects. Runway 1836 was lengthened to 3,500 feet. The airport was brought into the electronic age in January 1939 when a four-course radio range was installed. As 1940 arrived, the city could not have been happier with their new airport. But across the Atlantic, it was a different story. War had been raging in Europe for two years. America was getting ready for the inevitable involvement in the conflict. The U.S. War Department was looking for locations to establish new Army airfields, and Mayor Douglas saw an opportunity. In October of 1940, the city leased their three-year-old airport, plus an additional 82 acres of land to the U.S. Army. The military poured $4 million of improvements into the facility, mainly on the east and south sides of the field. Over the first three months of 1941, a lot of changes had occurred. A control tower was added, a large hangar constructed, runways were widened and extended. Over 90 buildings had been erected. In April of 1941, the Army named their new post the Charlotte Army Air Base. The name was short-lived because on 22 January 1942, they renamed it again to Morris Field. In honor of the late World War I veteran flyer, Major William Morris, a North Carolina native. In the end, the federal government spent $6 million turning the airport into a military base. Around this same time, Mr. Hank Gilbert started a new air service from Charlotte called State Airlines. They flew Blanca Cruisers. The small airplanes could only carry two passengers and flew between Charlotte, Columbia, and Charleston. However, Mr. Gilbert had to give up plans to expand his airline when the newly formed Civil Aeronautics Board, or CAB, which was now regulating airline routes and fares, declined his operating certificate. State Airlines had no choice if they wanted to survive. Gilbert gave up his plans for expanding his air service and focused on aircraft repair and modification. One of the State Airlines cruise airs now hangs from the ceiling of Concourse D in the Charlotte Terminal. With World War II now over, the country was ready to get on with life. The military was divesting itself of wartime assets. On 14 May 1946, the Army returned the greatly improved Morris Airfield to Charlotte, and the city restored the name to Charlotte Municipal Airport. Despite the many improvements the Army made during the war, none of them included a passenger terminal, which was now desperately needed. The city started making plans to build a terminal, but when an airport bond was defeated by the voters in 1946, it left the city struggling to make needed improvements for nearly a decade. A new terminal would need to wait. 
The city made use of the Army's vacated facilities out near the present day Fire Station No. 17 and the Air National Guard tie-down area, using old wooden administrative buildings as airline terminals and the adjacent concrete apron to park airliners. For years, an embarrassed city of Charlotte hung a sign in this makeshift terminal that read, We solicit your patient consideration of these facilities. The bond defeat resulted in the Charlotte airport becoming increasingly outdated and inadequate, right at a time when the airline industry was beginning to rapidly expand and literally take off. It took six years, but in 1952, the city finally cobbled together enough non-tax funds to combine with federal grant money to build the airport's very first formal airline terminal. It would be built on the southwest side of the airfield, what would now be deemed the south side of the airport, considering the modern-day layout. The project included extending runway 422 to nearly 8,000 feet to accommodate larger aircraft. In 1954, Charlotte opened to their brand new 70,000 square foot facility. It had three concourses arranged in a T pattern, a west, north, and east, that radiated out from the central terminal building. The concourses were more of a covered walkway affair, open on the sides to the weather. The central terminal was air conditioned and had two floors. On the roof was a new control tower. The ground floor was used for ticketing, baggage claim, and other passenger functions, while the second floor had a restaurant and office space. Along with the new terminal came a new name. The city renamed the airport Douglas Municipal Airport in honor of Mayor Douglas, who had been so instrumental in promoting aviation and the airport with the city government. It was around this time that the last airplane departed from the nearby Cannon Airport. The field closed and slowly faded from the landscape as well as the minds of most Charlotteans. Airline traffic was on the increase. By 1957, Eastern Airlines, Piedmont, Capital, Delta, and Southern Airways were all serving Charlotte with 76 flights a week. During the 1960s, airlines were transitioning to jet aircraft. Eastern Airlines brought the first jet airliner to Charlotte in 1962 when they began flying Boeing 720s to the airport. Passenger traffic continued to increase. In 1967, the 12-year-old passenger terminal completed the first iteration of many upgrades to come. The old open-air west concourse was now gone, replaced with an enclosed air-conditioned concourse, complete with a snack bar, its own baggage claim area, and a passenger lounge at each gate used exclusively by Eastern Airlines. In 1969, the old North and East concourses were removed, replaced with a single, larger air-conditioned North concourse. By 1970, passenger boarding had reached 815,000 annually. Airlines were demanding longer runways to accommodate their fleets of jet aircraft. The airport was again struggling to keep up with growth. The first glimmer of a new runway came in 1971 when a revision to the airport master plan suggested a 10,000 foot parallel north-south runway. The 1970s also brought a change in the wind with respect to regulating airline routes and fares. While perhaps needed in the 1940s and 50s to help incubate fledgling airlines, it was now felt that it was time to let free enterprise reign. In 1978, deregulation occurred, and by the end of the year, passenger counts had nearly doubled. 1979 brought that promised new 10,000-foot-long runway 36 left, 18 right, as well as a new 155-foot-tall control tower. And plans were already in place for the next generation of passenger terminal. This one would be on the north side of the airfield between the parallel runways. Before the decade was over, ground was broken on the new terminal, and the airline industry was about to burst wide open. Deregulation had no sooner occurred when Eastern Airlines began to implement hub structures within their route system, and Charlotte was used as one of their hubs. Piedmont Airlines followed suit in 1979. 
1981 brought another name change. The airport became the Charlotte Douglas International Airport. Sadly, former Mayor Douglas, the man for whom the airport was named, died the same year on 27 July 1981. In 1982, airline operations were moved from the old Southside Terminal to the brand new facility on the north side of the airport. The new passenger terminal provided 325,000 square feet of space and is the core of the terminal in use today. It had two concourses that jutted out to the south from the terminal building, known as concourses B and C. In 1984, Concourse C was extended another 300 feet to the south to provide more gates. Two years later, in 1986, the new Concourse A was completed on the west side of the Central Terminal Building. The following year, Concourse B received a 340-foot extension, adding another six gates. During the mid-1980s, the old Southside Terminal Building was put to good use. It evolved into a cargo center the old passenger concourses were removed to make way for cargo buildings and the old control tower was removed from the terminal's roof. The original central terminal building still exists today and is now used for office space. A new 80,000 square foot international and commuter concourse was constructed on the east side of the main terminal and opened in 1991 and became Concourse D. The expansion of the Central Terminal Building also occurred at this same time. In 1999, the city announced plans to construct a completely new concourse for regional carriers on the northeast area of the terminal. The plans also provided for expansion and improvements of concourses A and D. Two thousand two brought the new thirty two gate concourse E giving the regional carriers their own concourse. And Concourse A was also expanded. Concourse D was expanded with an additional nine gates and dedicated to handling all international flights. In 2010, Charlotte received a third north-south parallel runway on the west side of the airport property. The airport now had three runway 1836s, a left, center, and right version of each. And there was more to come. A new control tower is about to be completed, twice as tall as the current control tower, located on the south side of the airport. A sort of homage to the original passenger terminal and control tower. Plans are already in place for a fourth north-south runway as well as another concourse, this one on the northwest side of the central terminal. The 21st century looks to be an exciting one for the airport, with even more expansion and improvements. A little over 80 years have gone by since the city of Charlotte broke ground out near the long-forgotten community of Juneau. Over that time, the rural farmlands of western Mecklenburg County were transformed into one of America's busiest airports. The skies grew busy with the sounds of propellers and now jet engines. There are precious few remnants of the airport's early days that remain today. And one can't help but wonder when these two will fade into the fog of history. But before they do, let's take a journey down memory lane. If you drive out to 5600 Airport Drive and look through the security fence, you will find Morris Fields, building number 284. This was once the Army's Post Engineer Office. It dates from 1941, now occupied by the Civil Air Patrol. This is an administrative building, also from the Morris Airfield days, moved here to this site in 2004. It was buildings similar to this one that the city used as temporary airline terminals after World War II. This structure is particularly important. 
It is the only surviving structure from the 1937 initial opening of the airport. It is the original aircraft hangar that was erected on the north side of the airfield. While close to its original location, it was moved about 200 feet northeast in 2011 to where you see it now. None of these buildings are in good condition and likely will be lost to time and neglect unless something is done. I hope you enjoyed that trip back in time. Remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride.